everyone, good morning. I'm out in the desert again looking for another amazing animal that calls this area home. You know, there's that old poem or old song that we learn when we're kids that goes, home, home on the range where the deer and the antelope play. Some people call these guys antelope, other people call them speed goats, but they're actually neither. Pronghorn are very unique animals. They uh, are the last members of their scientific family. Their closest relatives are the okapi and giraffe. They're just beautiful, beautiful, unique animals. I've been very fascinated with them since I was just a kid. When I was about 10 or 11, I was out in a similar area with my brother and we saw some pronghorn off in the distance. I didn't know what they were. My brother did, but uh, I just knew that they were beautiful animals and I've just been fascinated with them ever since. Uh, like I say, they're very unique animals and they're very unique in a number of ways. They get their names from their uh, horns, actually. The name pronghorn uh, comes from their horns. They're unique in that they're the only horned animal. Uh, they're the only horns, not antlers, but horns that actually branch or fork. So again, that's where they get their name pronghorn. Uh, they're also unique in that the outer layer of their horn, they actually shed that each year, which again is unique among horned mammals. And so they're just very, very cool animals. They're the second fastest land mammal on the planet after the cheetah. They actually evolved to be able to outrun the extinct American cheetah. So again, just fascinating, fascinating animals. I love spending time with them. There's a bunch of them out here. I actually got to spend some time with some this morning. I was able to get a little bit of video footage, uh, some pictures as well in some amazing light. Uh, there's a bunch more of them out here. They can be quite skittish, but they can actually be very curious as well. And uh, that is actually something that I try to take advantage of in order to photograph them. I'll touch on that in a little bit. But uh, you know, the light, it's uh, getting harsh pretty quickly. So I'm gonna go try to find some more to photograph before it gets too bad. And we'll talk a little bit about how I uh, find these guys or how I try to lure them in, if you will. Um, I know that sounds bad, that's not my normal way of photographing animals, but I'll explain in a little bit uh, how I usually photograph these guys. All right, so I've actually got some pronghorn out here. Uh, they're still quite a ways off, but they're feeding this direction, so I'm hoping they'll come in closer. So earlier when I said that I was gonna lure them in, I hope you guys know at this point that I don't I don't ever call animals in. I don't bait them in any way. I don't use decoys, anything like that. It's not my style of photography, and uh, that's not something that I ever do, so I hope you guys know that by now. So when I say lure them in, I'm not actually luring them in. Uh, what I mean by that is I'm just gonna use their own natural curiosity in hopes that they'll come and uh, check me out, come in closer, and that I'll be able to photograph them. As I mentioned before, pronghorn are naturally very curious animals and they like to know what uh, strange things are, things that they don't see every day. They like to know what they are and they'll come in a lot closer than you would expect to check it out. So the best way that I found to photograph these guys is not to sneak up on them or anything like that. Uh, what I'll do is I'll sit in an open area like this uh, with a little bit of camouflage on just so they can't pick me out right away as a human. And I'll just sit in an area like this and I'll just sit extremely still. And once they've noticed me, because they have very good eyesight, uh, they'll generally notice you. And a lot of the times they'll actually come in a lot closer than you would expect. And they'll just, being naturally curious, they'll come in, they'll check me out. And once they're done checking me out, they'll just keep on their way feeding or whatever it is. So that's the best way that I've actually found to photograph these guys is, again, I don't try to sneak up on them just because their eyesight is so incredible. They will see you if you try sneaking up on them and they'll think you're a natural predator that's stalking them or something like that and they'll, they'll take off. But if you just sit still, allow them to come in and check you out, use their natural curiosity to get your pictures, uh, that's what I mean by lure them in. And, uh, it, I'm hoping it works. A lot of the times it does, sometimes it doesn't. So I'm hoping it does with these guys. 
and I'll get what else I can of them uh, before the light gets too incredibly harsh here. But uh, yeah, I'll hopefully get some stuff of these guys and we'll let them go on their way when they're done with me. I will take whatever shade I can find out here. It is so hot out there and it's not even that late in the morning. So it feels so good in the shade of this, this rock here. So I'll hang out here for another hour and a half or so and then the sun will be over my head and I'll have to find something a little bit more permanent. You know, that was a fantastic morning though. So I was out there by that bush just hoping those pronghorn would come in a little bit closer and honestly I don't even know if they saw me out there I was right by that bush and uh, they they kind of fed past me still quite a ways away but they just went on right past me and I don't know if they saw me at all but uh, you know a couple weeks ago I was using that same method to try to photograph some pronghorn out here and I was in a more open area there weren't any bushes or anything and I was just sitting there uh, for about an hour or so and sure enough some pronghorn came in and uh, they got in just extremely close and they did this whole circle around me just checking me out and I was out there taking pictures you know adjusting my tripod when I was doing video and whatnot and uh, they didn't even care they were just curious as to what I was doing sitting out there and the light was just absolutely gorgeous and I was able to get some content to them and it was absolutely fantastic so that method it really does work you know it's not a foolproof method sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't but I challenge you to get out there and give it a try if you're ever out and you see some pronghorn you know sit down for a little bit and see if they come in closer to you because that method for me at least it has worked many many times and it's my favorite method to photograph these guys because it allows them to come in close to you and they set the terms of how close they'll get. They'll come in until they're, uh, they might not be as comfortable and they'll just kind of hang out there and you can get your pictures and then they'll move off and keep eating. So it allows them to set the terms while you are still able to get some awesome footage of them. So I challenge you to do that. Another method that I really like uh, photographing pronghorn is for my vehicle actually. If I'm out in an open area like this and I see some pronghorn, uh, a lot of times they'll come in extremely close to vehicles when they won't to humans. I've been photographing pronghorn for my vehicle before and they've been just right there. And uh, I had somebody pull up behind me and get out of their vehicle thinking, oh, you know, they're right here. They're not scared of this guy. I can photograph them. And they got out of their vehicle and those pronghorn took off so fast. So a lot of times the pronghorn, they'll be uh, very accustomed to vehicles, but not to people. So that's another method that I really like to photograph them is just from my window. Uh, it's not the most, you know, nature oriented experience that I could have, uh, not like being out here, but it's still a very good method to photograph those guys. If, if the opportunity arises, I'll take it. Uh, you know, this area out here, this desert, is one of my favorite habitats to photograph them in, but some of my other favorite places to photograph them in are uh, places like the sage steppe areas where it's just sagebrush. I love getting them in that habitat. I think it's so, so pretty, and I photograph them multiple times in areas like that. You know, Yellowstone or Grand Teton are wonderful places to photograph them in, and those are species out there that a lot of people don't stop for. I don't know why, but a lot of people just don't stop for them. And areas like that, they tend to be much more habituated towards people. So those are wonderful areas to photograph pronghorn in if you have the opportunity. Uh, but my favorite, favorite place to photograph pronghorn in is the uh, open prairie. You know, it's a very similar area to this. You know, it's very open. There's a lot of grass, whatnot. The difference out there is that the grass is actually alive <laughs> and there's a lot of flowers out there, tons of birds everywhere. Uh, you get those evening thunderstorms that roll through and it's just so gorgeous. I love it out there. 
and anytime I can catch pronghorn in those flowers or in the evening when those thunderstorms are rolling through and you just get this intense warm light when it shines through those thunder clouds it's just so pretty and so those areas are some of my favorites to uh, find pronghorn in and photograph them like I say such a unique and beautiful animal I want to challenge you guys next time you're out there and you see a pronghorn uh, rather than just pass it by like most people do stop and try to get some pictures of it try that method that I explained earlier earlier of just sitting there and seeing if they'll come in closer to you because that method it really does work so uh, yeah I challenge you guys to try to get some images of them next time you're out and you notice one or again use your vehicle as a blind if you've got the opportunity to do so just beautiful animals though like I said I'm gonna hunker down here for the next hour and a half or so until I don't have any shade anymore and then I'll have to go find some shade somewhere else it's hard finding shade in these areas out here but uh, you know they are still some of my just favorite areas to be in beautiful beautiful area and beautiful wildlife so I want to thank you guys for following along this week I hope you guys have enjoyed many of you may have never seen a pronghorn before and if that's the case I hope you've enjoyed I hope you've enjoyed the content that I've been able to share with you this week of these guys and uh, if you have seen pronghorn or if you've never seen them and you just don't know anything about them I hope this video has been educational I hope you've been able to learn something like I mentioned I'm just fascinated with pronghorn and I have been for years they are just so unique and different than so many of the other species that dwell in these areas. So I hope you've learned something and found this video enjoyable and educational. Thank you so much for following along this week. If you did enjoy, please give it a big thumbs up. It helps me out a lot. And uh, you know what, you guys, be safe out there, have fun, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>